when I first came to Japan, we had only Japanese devotees. And when all the Indians start coming, it, it's, uh, it's a whole other world, you know, to bring oh, okay. it all together. The Nirvitashas and the Shunyavadis have to come together, you know. But that's also breaking down by Kirtan. Everybody's getting used to the fact that you're not the body, mm. you know. And that's our biggest problem that we identify with the body. It's a challenge. So as far as myself, I went to Thailand also. Yeah. Okay, so just coming back to China. So is it is it just that we have to do it discreetly or is there like fear of detection and persecution from what, say, for no. example, what we read about, say, Krishna consciousness in Soviet Russia, the devotees were actively under threat of being persecuted. Is it like that or no. is it like... No, devotees were never persecuted. Sorry? Devotees, they never had any problem like that. Oh, okay. So in some ways, it is like the Middle East. As long as we we keep to something like, something follow like their rules, they don't really have trouble. You don't with criticize us. the government. You just nice people. You know they're all good citizens. And hmm. They they might know you know about them, but they see they're nice people, and I guess it just can go on. You know. Okay. And uh, so when they. When people are attracted to say yoga or kirtan, eventually, do they also in we are talking China? Do they also take up chanting and serious bhakti practices? Well, it's a small percentage, like small, everywhere else. Yeah, of course. I think that's everywhere. It's, it's, like in Bombay, Baladev Prabhu said, when they go to a university, they might start out with two hundred students. Yes. And at first, they can't really preach very much or the university won't like it. So they just joke and talk casually and have a little kirtan. Gradually, they cultivate some. And he said, after two years, they get two devotees. They have it all, you know. Okay. Not like everybody, everybody's good, but some do. Same thing in Japan. Some take it up seriously. In different different degrees. Some just like to have the devotees come and chant in their yoga school, but personally they're not practicing or they like other gurus to come also. You know, they they like everybody. But you know, they're reading our Bhagavad Gita, so we just try to keep going like that. It's like a, whatever way you can reach people, like everywhere. Hmm. And a lot of the devotees were practicing Buddhism of some kind. There's different kinds of Buddhism, but one is called Pure Land Buddhism. They have that in Japan also, where you go to the land of Buddha and you be with Buddha. And they're vegetarian for the most part and quite personal. So a lot of them, when they contact Bhagavad Gita and more philosophy, they really like it. Okay, so so Bhagavad Gita itself is not a problem. It is uh, so we can distribute Bhagavad Gita also in through our programs. You said that that Mataji had printed several uh, hundred copies of the Bhagavad Gita. Thousand, three thousand. Okay. <laughs> so distributing no, the Gita is also at, not a problem. At that time, no, in the programs, it's a yoga program, and Bhagavad Gita is a yoga book. And... Oh, okay. You know, they're just, they're very smart people. They just know how to do it. I don't know exactly, you know, what they're thinking, or what, but so far, I just, you know, they, a little, you, you got to keep cool, you know, you can make a big show. But like I said, everywhere, even in America, we need to do that. In India, you know, the the the, the home programs of Bhakti Vriksha, the the intimate programs of a few people getting together, this is very, it's really important if you want to cultivate people. So from, from both your 
focus in what you mentioned in China as well as in, in, in Japan earlier. It seems ultimately it's uh, the personal connections that will help people to grow, whatever be the initial right. pathways, whether it is yoga or kirtan or whatever. It's a personal thing that ultimately does it. Even say in India, if somebody comes to the temple because they're naturally pious, attracted to temples, but unless somebody becomes friends with them, they're not going to become devotees. Okay. The Christians in America, they have statistics on everything, you know, and they say that people will come to a religion and join maybe for so many reasons, but they stay because they make friends. Okay. We have to learn to be friends with people. 